<clears throat> hey, Chihiro. Hello, everybody, and welcome in. Rai, extra nozzles pounces on you, Uwu, you're so warm. Thank you for the follow, Petit, Petito Gio, and also thank you, uh, Dizzy, for the follow as well. So, this, most of the information in this, I'm not going to lie, will pertain more to Americans. Some European, but mainly Americans. This stream will actually be a little more serious than what you're used to from me. And while I will admit the first lesson in slides I will be going through may seem a little patronizing, do not take it that way. This lesson I originally made for middle schoolers. So if it seems like it's really dumbed down, well, it's really dumbed down. Because, again, I taught this to 7th and 8th graders because that was a great age to start to teach the foundational basics of financial literacy. So yes, this you will see more of what I would like, what of how I was when I taught in my classroom. Um, so if I do not respond to chat messages, it's either because I am focusing on going over something and explaining, or it's not pertinent. Feel free to ask any questions in chat. I will do my best to get to them. Um, but yeah, so today's lesson will be going over two parts. The first part is debit and credit cards, the basics and understandings of how each of them work. And then the second part of today's lesson will be budgeting. What is it? How do you use it? How do you determine what your budget is? So, uh, without further ado, it's going to be that. Next week's lesson is going to be probably one of the most important ones. And it's because this one, legit, I've never seen it taught anywhere except in my classroom. And that is how to fill out it. Oh. Rai, extra noses pounces on you. Ooh, you're so warm. Thank you for the follow, Yasu. Um, and that is going to be how to fill out the work forms they give you for taxes, a W-4. And also how to fill out 1040A and other tax-related information. Because again, it's not really a skill that is taught. But I do have multiple curriculums that I used to teach this as a full-time um, class. So it went for all 36 weeks and it was graded. I have worksheets. I have other documents. If you would like them, you can either send me a message on Twitter, request them in the stream, and I will do my best to remember or on Discord, because I can send you answer keys and other items I have made for these. So, without further th ado... <clears throat> debit and credit cards. What are they? What's the difference? So, we're going to go over definitions, what they are, and what to do with them, and what not to do with them. Because there's a lot of tricky things with credit cards that they do not tell you when you apply for them. So even though you might have a credit card with a really low limit, say like $200, there's a lot of secrets behind that and why that can actually hurt you more than it helps you. So we're going to go right into it. So these are a little plastic card. A debit card is a little plastic card that looks like a credit card, but it's not. So it is tied to either your checking, your savings account, or both. There are some banks, like here in Ohio, uh, Huntington Bank, for example, you will pull from your checking account first. But if you go over your balance, it will then pull from whatever you have in your savings. Debit cards have replaced checks. Uh, checks were a very common use of payment back in the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s. And the difference between a debit card and a check is a check can take several days to clear and remove the balance from your bank account. While with a debit card, typically, typically, when it is used, the money is taken out almost immediately. Now, there are some caveats to that. For example, sometimes if you were to get gas, they will actually put a hold on your amount for how much something is going to be potentially, then it comes out. And there are some places you may make your payment online instantly with your debit card, but it can still take a couple days to come out. So it's very important to not only just use the balances that are in your bank account, but also to keep a running tab for the love of God on your own. Do not just rely on online banking. So, hello, Lucille. 
So debit cards, if you want to withdraw cash from them, typically fee free, you can do it at ATMs to withdraw or deposit money. So an ATM stands for automated teller machine. Um, I did not make this slide, so that person always takes money. <laughs> but the reason it's called an automated teller machine is because ATMs uh, did not become common use until the late 80s and early 90s. Before then, you had to go into the bank with either strictly just an ATM card or your account register, and you would withdraw from a teller in the bank. Now, banks nowadays, you typically only see two or three tellers at the counter. But back then, and when I was younger, you would actually see five to eight people working at the banks at any given time. And honestly, I wish that was still the case today, because with only two or three, if you need something specific, that's not like account info, but you need to do other things like um, getting something notarized, which is also going to be a lesson in and of itself. Um, you have to wait a while. So your debit card, uh, you use at ATMs when you specifically want money. And it stands for automated teller machine because they have the same uses and functions as a teller inside of a bank. So, debit cards. They look like a credit card, but they're very different because they are based on a set amount of money. Credit cards, you must be 18 years old in the United States to get a credit card. Um, debit cards, typically, it's... 14 to 16 years you can get one but if you have a credit card under 18 congratulations either the company or you have broken the law congratulations have fun with that so most financial institutions they have a minimum age of 16 without a parent so if you're 16 with a driver's license you can go to the bank and if you have an account there you can get a debit card um but you can also get one very 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 young if your parent acts as a custodian on your account. So a, a custodian is kind of like a conservator. It is a responsible person that will perform the basic day-to-day -day stuff for it, such as handling account balances, statement use, uh, any queries or inquiries on your account while you just use the card. You see these a lot on TV and commercials now where the card has like the picture of the kid and they're able to use it on their own. Um, eh, I personally am not a huge fan of that. I prefer, because again, I am a little older. I'm in my mid thirties. So I prefer, and this is what my ex-wife and I do with my daughter. We have a savings account set for her that is just in our name. So that way she will then gain access to it when she is 18. Uh, we plan on just giving her money to spend and save on her own while keeping this account hidden for her. So those are some things you could do as a parent. All right. So here's the part that is important for most of the people that could potentially be watching this. And this is something I see my friends do all the time. Real life, online friends, doesn't matter. I see a lot of my friends doing this and it really pisses me off. So... When you are using your debit card and spending money, first of all, it doesn't have to be a checkbook register. A spending tracker is a great thing. There's free ones you can even use. I believe there is still a free Google Sheets form that you can put in purchases to update your balance automatically for you. Now, you do want to keep a running balance at all times. Online banking can be wrong. It could not update. So you need to personally keep account of your own finances and be held accountable for it. I cannot tell you how many times I have seen one of my friends go to do something and they're like, oh shit, I'm at like negative $80 now. What happened? And it's like, well, go over your purchases. What did you do? And they'll be like, oh, right. I forgot this came out. Oh, it just took this many days to get out. Um, don't do that. Keep a running balance. Actually keep track of your finances. It will save you a lot of time. And if the bank does actually commit an error, you will have a written record detailing everything that went on. And there are some lenders that won't let a transaction take place without sufficient funds. So there are some banks that do allow you to go over how much money is actually in your account? Now, 
read the fine print on those. Some banks go up to a certain amount and they will not charge you an overdraft fee. Some will allow it to happen no matter how small it is and then charge you an overdraft fee. Overdraft fees typically fall into the range of $15 to $35. So, based on the financial institution that you are banking at, you could go over just like 40 cents in your bank account, and your bank could justifiably, because it is in the contract you signed to open that bank account, charge you $35 fucking dollars for going over. So, if you have that kind of money to burn, just give it away. Like, if you can be like, oh, I'll just take a fucking $35 overdraft fee, what do you do? Tell me. What do you do? Because then you're, you're literally wasting money and assets. But keep it, I have two. I have, I use my mobile banking apps to double check my balance to make sure I am right. Now, I also do mine a little differently. I'm not pulling up my finances because they have my account numbers on there. And even though I am poor, no. Um, I keep a notebook one for both my, and I will tell you the two banks I'm with. I use Chime for all of my Twitch stuff. So that way it's all together in one spot. And my personal banking is with KeyBank. Now, KeyBank is pretty cool. Um, they have, I believe if you go over $10, they do not charge you an overdraft fee, which was great because a month ago I forgot to take out just this $5 thing I had to buy for my kiddo. And I went over on my account by 88 cents. Let me tell you when I saw that I was freaking the fuck out because it was like, Oh God. Oh God. And then I went through the contract for that one and it was like, Oh, thank God. Oh, they don't charge. But that is why it's important to keep track. Especially if you have multiple bank accounts with, I'm, I'm hoping to God, most Twitch streamers do. If you can, do not link Twitch directly to your bank account. Especially with all the people that do chargebacks and other items. Don't. Just don't. Have a spare one. You don't, and you can easily connect like Chime. There's a reason I picked Chime. It was 100% free and I can send money from Chime right to my key bank account. It takes like a day to get it done, but it's amazing. They're separated. So if Twitch or PayPal fucks me up in some way, my main account is not compromised. So debit cards, make sure you keep a running account because that is linked to your actual bank account and does not have a set limit for you to hit. So you can't spend it all willy nilly. Make sure when you withdraw money from an ATM, be sure to take note of how much you withdrew. Now, when I say how much you withdrew, that can spend your money willy nilly. Angel, you have no room to talk right now, bitch. Hmm? 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 That's right. That's right. I see you. I know your finances. <laughs> You had an opportunity. I was there for a week. You could have. <laughs> but um, there are some ATMs, if it is not affiliated directly with your bank, they can and will charge you a fee for using that ATM. It is a transactional fee. Some places it is, it is very, very minor. And it's like a dollar. Some places, however, especially at gas stations, which is why you have to watch out, they can be as high as five. So you could withdraw just $20, but you get charged $5 and it's a set fee. It's not a percentage. So even if they allow you just to withdraw like five or $10, you could be charged $5 for withdrawing $5 from said bank. It's not worth it. So make sure that when you read the screens, you're not just clicking through. Check to see because some of those are affiliated with banks. Some are not, and they are privately contracted ATMs. So when you withdraw, make sure to note any fees along with the cash. This happens at stores at the registers too. Some stores charge a fee whenever you withdraw money from your account when you have cash added on to the total to be given to you when you withdraw at a store. 
a lot of the like smaller income or low income stores like Dollar Tree, Dollar General, um, Marks, stuff like that will charge you a fee to have money given to you from your bank account. So a debit card, obviously you can use it just as credit, which is why most people get confused, but credit is actually just meaning to bypass your PIN. So the PIN number is your personal identification number. For the love of all things holy, do not use something like your birthday. Don't. That is the easiest shit in the world. Like, don't use any birthdays. Use a number that has something significant to you. Um, that isn't one of those. Uh, in fact, just because the account I have on this one is closed, I didn't use my birthday. Instead, what I did is I used a factorial of my ex-wife's, my daughter's. <laughs> it's okay. You're not paying for it. You're allowed to be late. Um, and my birthdays together. And when all those numbers were multiplied together, I used the last four digits as my pin. It makes it incredibly hard to guess, but if you do that, make sure you keep note of it somewhere. And by note somewhere, I don't mean in your wallet. Like, save it in a secured folder on your phone or on your desk. Not like at work, but at home, in a lockbox. You can get a decent lockbox that holds your financial information, fire safe ones, for a solid 20, 30 bucks. They don't have to be massive. You just need something to hold on to this information. And if it's in a lockbox with the key, if your house gets broken into, well, it's going to make it that much harder. I know that the locksmith guy on YouTube makes it look really easy, but you have to remember, my friends, people are stupid. There's a reason why I'm giving this lesson right now. And I really don't care if you take offense to it. People are dumb and don't take the time to do the research on their own. So typically, if you have a locked box as a normal person, you are safe. You will not have to worry about somebody taking it. Just make sure you have a safe spot that you will remember where this information is stored. All right. So these are the do's with a debit card. Track every purchase. And by keep track, I don't mean just with online banking. Keep a running balance physically somewhere on a notebook, a checkbook register, or on your computer in a program like Excel or Google Sheets. Preferably something that doesn't have online access. Like, yes, I know I use Google Sheets, but I also use Excel. Because if you have an offline version, less likely to get hacked. Realize money comes out almost immediately. And that's the key here. Almost. Sometimes it does not. That is why you have to, again, this is the most important one. Track every purchase. And keep pin numbers in a safe place at what is home. Nice. Salmon. Salmon. It is salmon. 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 Yeah. Salmon. Salmon. Salmon and salad. Salmon and salad it's, and rice. You don't pronounce the L in salmon is silent. You I'm so glad it's going to read salmon. this. Be like Percy and rack up tons of debt on credit cards and loans per sip for Gremsmark. Don't. Don't. I know how much Percy ran up because we actually have... Okay, chat. A slight break from the teaching. Percy and I actually have a lot of real adult conversations. And by adult, I don't mean sexual. I mean, we talk about personal finances, homes, you know, stuff that boring adults talk about because we're old. So I know, I know what Percy is talking about with that. Don't do it. Don't do it. Do not do it. It was a significant number. Don't do it. <laughs> Percy has avoided a lot of pain luckily but don't do it just don't when we get into the uh the lesson on loans and stuff you'll see why you'll see why that's uh week three it's larger yeah it is it's just don't just don't 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 overdraft for the love of fucking god don't overdraft your bank account oh god oh Sorry, my ex-wife just messaged me and it popped up on my phone, my iPhone down here. And the first line is hypothetical parenting question for you here. And it's like, anyway, don't overdraft fees. 
don't overdraft. The fees are nasty. Like I said, even if you only overdraft by pennies over your account, they can charge you typically anywhere up to $35 to $50, depending on the institution, the institution and the banking laws in your state. Do not spend it frivolously. Remember, mistakes and emergencies can happen. And sometimes some places will charge twice accidentally. I want to dispute. You had a payday. Oh my God. Oh, oh my God. Payday loans are the worst, the worst, but we're going to get over those, over those eventually that, that, that might be a two stream lesson about loans because payday loans are, oh, okay. Here, here's a quick foreshadow. Payday loans can wreck your life in a month. That's how short they can. They put in the wrong date. Wow. And don't share your pin. I mean, again, this was kid lesson, so it says anyone but parents. I didn't even give it to my ex-wife. Don't share your pin with anyone unless they have direct access to your account. If they don't, fuck them. They don't need to know. They don't need to know. Got it? If somebody desperately needs to use your thing, tell them to run it as credit so that way you can see. You give them their pin. And they can do a lot more than just buy stuff at stores. They can wreck your life at banks by withdrawing everything you have. And once they have the cash, guess what? They can put it in the account. If they can only use it as credit, then it leaves a digital trail. But you give them the pin, and then there's no digital trail. It's just physical. Oh, it was withdrawn here. What happened after that? No idea. So don't share your pin with anybody, chat. Don't. Just don't. Don't. All right. This section is what prompted me to make this lesson in the first place. Because I see a lot of YouTubers on Twitter who do monthly or bi-monthly sub and donathons. And not just the ones that do Twitch full time, the ones that have jobs. Because they buy a fuck ton of art. They buy a fuck ton of other things. They make frivolous, stupid purchases on things like credit cards. And then guess what? They can't afford anything, and this is why. Let's talk about credit cards, you fucks. So, when you think of a credit card, don't think of it as credit. Think of it as a negative bad debt. Um, if used incorrectly, yeah, simple solution, don't have credit cards. And if you do, have a very small one, and I will explain why. If used incorrectly, it will wreak havoc on your life. Fun fact, my ex-father-in-law has 35000 in credit card debt because he continuously rolls them over to higher balance and higher interest rate credit cards. Because he's a fucking moron. He's a fucking moron. That's how you ruin your life. He also does it with Harley motorcycles. He buys a new one every year, rolls over the previous balance after the trade-in, and then, oh no, the payments are going up. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Now, don't let everybody tell you that all... God damn it, Percy. Yay, learning the school system never gave. Yep. So credit cards can be used to help build a solid history and credit scores. They can. But this is where you need to be an adult. And that is why my language does not match the words on the slides. This is where you need to be adult and learn a little bit of self-control. Because these things that you can do are in your early 20s, late teens, so 19, 20, 21, these things can affect you all the way until now. And I'm saying that as a 35-year-old. Like, you need to be sure what you are doing with credit cards. Because they can be hell. So, credit cards. It's a bit different from your debit card, obviously, because it's not deducted from a checking or savings account. You get a bill for all of your purchases that you need to pay. There's a reason why I have preferably in full here. If you have more than one credit card, be aware 
that different cards will have different billing cycles. And yes, that does not mean when you open your card is when it is too. Most of the really predatory credit cards that give it to just about anybody have set dates, no matter when you open the card in which the bill is due. So you need to be careful and track those due dates like a hawk. So when I say using these incorrectly, well, this is what I mean. Paying a bill late and incurring late fees. Guess what? Same thing as an overdraft fee. Your bill's late. They can charge you $35 as a late fee. Purchasing items without the intent of paying the bill in full. Looking at you, Percy. Looking at you. And paying interest finance charges results as a result of carrying a balance. Interest is fun and same as those finance charges. We'll get into those in a second. But if you, I'm going to get away with it scot-free, you hope. Um, if you can, if you can. And I realize with the economy and the way my generation is, it can be difficult. But if you can, try to only spend on your credit card what you know you can pay in full at the end of the month. I had one credit card I specifically used for gas. Yeah, see, that's a little different. That's You also have, I also know your, I know way too much about my friend's finances. Um, but it's if you can. Like, when I lost my job for being trans, I had to use my credit card to pay bills to survive. But I never had a lot of them, and they didn't have a high balance, so it really only kept me for two months. Luckily, though, the little bit I've made from Twitch, I have paid those off, and they now reflect positively as paid and no longer as collections on my credit report. So, this is where you get fucked with a credit card. Once you are in the cycle of carrying a balance, it's insanely hard to get out from under it. That is because most of the interest charges compound monthly. That means you will be charged an interest rate each month based on the balance that is carried over when the billing cycle date renews. So these interest charges keep piling up because most of the time, the minimum payment can be slightly lower than the interest racked up on your account. So if you are just parrying, paying the minimum balance, you might not actually be gaining any credit use on your credit card. And this is the major struggle that people are facing today because they will pay the bare minimum because they need it for something and the interest keeps racking up and it fucks them over oh yeah amex isn't the only one i'll be talking about a few predatory ones here too those i'm going to pull up my phone to talk about though like my cell phone cell phone because again i'm not pulling up my personal info please talk about apr I'm getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> All right. So when you purchase an item with your credit card, if you're going to do it and it's something small, like for your paycheck, if you know you'll be able to pay that within a paycheck or before the billing date, do it. Like, that's fine. And you need to know how much you have credit-wise because there is an insane thing that happens with credit cards once you hit a certain percentage of balance. Not a total balance, a percentage. So this is why it does not matter if you have $50,000 as a maximum balance of credit cards or $500. Because the percentage of your income is used to give you those limits anyway. And it's going to be the same percentage on when it fucks your credit score over. So, this is where what I call the true cost of a credit bought item comes into play. The true cost of a $50, $50 pair of jeans. First of all, you buying... Oh, great, an ad. I'm going to wait. Because I don't think everybody in here... Does everybody have an ad blocker or subbed? I'll wait.
So if if you have a sub, this would be a good time. Go pee, take a drink, you know, stand up and stretch. I'm gonna drink some of my. Uh, what water is this? Ah. Um, citrus twist sparkling ice water. Jesus Christ. Okay. You're filling time. I see that. Oh. Oh. I'm even going to do leg stretches. Oh. Left leg. Right leg. There we go. And shrimp. I'm going to raise the arms on my chair so I can rest my elbows on it comfortably. Do a really good neck stretch. Make sure. So for those of you that are unencumbered by the ads right now, we're already at like 40 minutes in the stream. Uh, 30 minutes total of just talking about this stuff i had 40 minutes to teach us each day so you guys are going to be getting essentially like three or four days worth of presentation and lessons per section so with the credit cards i had a whole activity thing i would do with the kids and that would take a couple days as well so it, there, there's going to be a bit it, it's going to be a bit all right, so be aware that things can add up very quickly. Couple dollars here, pair of jeans there, fast food, gas, and then all of a sudden your credit card's maxed. And this way you won't be surprised when the bill arrives and keep all your receipts. There's apps for that now. They have apps where you can just take, yeah, I had to take calculus too. Um, there are apps in which you could take a picture of your receipt and it will upload it to a database that will keep track of what you have spent and where there's also a home personal scanner with a program that does it i don't remember the name but it's pretty good it's pretty good your credit card is hidden in a drawer good all right there's a reason this is all red you see this this right here when you get your bill, you will be given the option to pay the minimum. Don't do that. Don't. 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 Do I have voice mod still installed? Please say I have voice mod still installed because there's something... I don't know if I installed it on the new computer. I didn't. Son of a bitch. Because I was going to use, like, the deep voice and be like, don't. The minimum is not paying it in full. Because, again, this is where it's important to pay attention to vocabulary. Minimum means the smallest possible amount to satisfy. Maximum is the largest amount to pay to satisfy. Don't just pay the minimum. Look at my eyes. Don't just pay the minimum. I will find you and punch you in the nuts. Credit card companies love charging you finance fees and late fees. Oh, what if you don't have nuts? Your man does. Yeah, I was about to say, you've got internal ones. Everybody does. I can kick you so hard down there, it won't matter. I can also punch you in the throat. There, everybody has a throat. I'll punch you in the throat. So, some cards have what is called a variable interest rate 
This is the APR Percy was alluding to earlier. There are multiple kinds of interest rates. The worst one is a variable. If your interest rate on your card is raised, which I believe the maximum interest in the United States allowed is still 29.99. I'm going to double check that because I don't remember. This is uh, about a year old now. Maximum allowed credit card interest rate. Oh, 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 oh. Oh my God. Okay, it's gone now. It's gone. As of June 26, 2023, there is now no federal law limiting the interest that credit card companies can charge in general. Unless you're active military, then it's 36%. So it bases it on the state, but there is no applicable federal law anymore. That caps the interest rate on credit cards. Hooray. Welcome to high times in the United States, baby. Where every credit card company, they don't have to whine and dine you before you're getting fucked. They'll just throw a 40 at you. There are some pros to credit cards. When tr th this, is, this is true. When you're traveling, they're pretty nice. Especially if you know you have the cash in hand. But you're worried about losing your debit card, dealing with traveler's checks, or having to do a currency exchange. You can use your credit card. They can help build your credit history if used correctly. And if you're going to lose everything or something terrible absolutely happens, they can be a godsend. However, they could fuck up your life. And it's easy to overuse due to how easy it is to get a credit card. I don't have an income and I'm still waiting on disability. Just in October, I have gotten three credit card pre-approvals with no income. Think about that. It's that easy to get one. Yep, they are predatory offers. Section three. All right, this is where the math is going to come into play, so you fuckers better pay attention. And this is, this is, okay, th this is, this is teacher is a moment. Teacher is a moment. This is why I get really pissed when my, my students would say, what am I going to use any of this math for in life? You really want to know? It's shit like this. So you may think, oh, X plus Y equals blah, blah, blah. Oh, I don't need to know this. No, because the X stands for an item. The Y stands for another item. And these are just generic terms as placeholders. Do you know what a placeholder is? It is something that stands for something else. All, most of the equations, like honestly, algebra one's about where, hmm, if I'm going to be honest with you, algebra one, geometry, that's about all you need really for realistic math use, but, hmm. But, let's say you want the new... You want the new Salmon Phone 15 with its titanium backing that shatters really easily. And it's out for the low, low cost of $500. But this cell phone company, Salmon Mobile, doesn't offer pay-as-you-go contracts. Instead, you just are like, you know what? I have that much on my credit card. Fuck it. I'm just going to put that $500 on it right off the bat. The bill comes in and you're like, oh, well, I can't pay it in full. I'm just going to pay what the minimum says on there. So, assuming your interest rate is 20%, and this, this is kind of where I wish I had a tablet still, so that way I could pull it up and actually do the math. I'm going to need, chat, I'm going to put a tablet on my throne, not like a drawing tablet, just a cheap, like, iPad or some shit, 
So that way I can start doing these teaching lessons properly. I didn't think about this. No, that one wouldn't have helped me, Yuri. That one wouldn't have helped me. My, I, I that one is okay. It's for, that is for drawing. I used the Samsung uh, Galaxy Tab S8 with the pen because it had the bigger canvas screen and I could project it right into my computer and also to smart boards. Like, I'm good with the teaching tech. Like, I'm, I, I've got the skills for that. A little baby tablet. Yeah, just like, just a, like a, like a tab S7. It's like four. I'm gonna throw one up on my throne. If people want to donate to it, go ahead. Um, so assuming your interest rate is 20%. Now, for mathematical purposes, to convert any percentage to an interest rate, and I'm gonna put this into the chat. So for 20%, to turn 20% into a decimal, you place the decimal at the end of the number, typically at the zero or the ones place. So in this case, R zero is the number in the ones place. So immediately to the right of it is where the decimal would be. Sometimes you will have an interest rate with a decimal already in it, which makes this infinitely easier. A Samsung, <laughs> okay, that, that's funny. Um, so, to turn any percent to a decimal, locate where the decimal would be in the number. And this is the hardest problem that middle schoolers have, is understanding their left from their right. You will take it, and you will move it two spots to the left. One, two. So, mathematically, to put the percentage into your math equation, 20% would be the same as two-tenths. That is the proper way to say it. You could say 0.2, but I also could punch you in the face. So, 20% is the same as 2 tenths. And you pay $25, which is your minimum payment. What is the true cost of, of the item over time? Do I have them? I better. All right. So, if you take over two years, it would, it, 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 words, it would take over two years to pay off that $500 cell phone because you would have paid $113 in interest. Let me see if I can pull up the calculator here. Calculator, da, da, da. I need to add a new window. Window capture, window capture two. I don't know how to read, thank you, Percy. This is, all right, nope, I need calculator, where are you? Calculator, all right. So, What it would do with that 500, if you multiply it by 0.2, it is $100. So, what would happen is you would pay the minimum. So, that would actually take it down to 475. So, let's assume that you paid the 25 down before the bill, first bill came out. So that would then take it, and your total right now would be 570. What are we learning? We're learning how credit cards fuck people over in the United States. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. How about a $2,000 balance? Oh my god. Yep, hold on. I need... This is where a tablet... All right, so instead of me trying to draw it out, I found one, so we're going to do this. So we're going to go to this window capture. I need... Do, do, do. Is it this? No, no, shit. All right, so let's say that it was... You have that starting balance of $500. So, no payments made. Anything can be a violation if you try hard enough. Okay. Um, so, what you would do is you would take that balance and divide it by how many days are in the cycle. So, with this, this is APR. Okay? So, this is APR. Get ready. 
So you have that balance of $500. We're going to assume a 30 day billing cycle. So what you would do is you would take 500, divide it by 30. So this means interest for that month, well, for 30 days, it would be $16, blah, 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 blah. That would be added to your balance at the end of the month because that is the one APR. So if we take the 16 and 67 cents and you pay 25, guess what? You actually only paid $8 and 34 cents of your bill. And then guess what? You take that, you do it again. Divide by 30, take that, add your previous balance which in this case was 4.91 and 67 cents. Guess what? $508 minus 25 in 2 months even though you have paid $50, you have only paid $17, well $16 and 95 cents of that cell phone. So, we're going to do the same thing here with this 2000 that you see here and we're going to clear the history so let's okay let's get this oh, you guys can see it fine i need to move it so let's do this again two thousand dollar balance divided by a 30-day billing cycle so that is 66 dollars and 67 cents so we're going to take two thousand plus 66 dollars and 67 cents assuming the minimum payment is 50. Assuming. Like, mm, do I want to do it this way? Yeah, we're going to do it this way. Minus 50. Guess what? You're over your balance. Now, that's if it's a really predatory card. We'll assume you made the $50 payment before they compounded the interest. So we're going to take 1950, divide it by 30. That is a flat $65. We're going to take 1950 plus that 65. You are now at $2,015. Uh oh. Minus your $50 payment. 1960. Do you see where I'm going with this? Do, do you see where I'm going with this chat? Does it look like you will ever pay off this credit card? Hmm? Potentially, potentially a whopping, yeah, don't do it, 1,323 in interest alone on top of 2,000. That would take you over five and a half years to pay. A $2,000 item would cost you $3,300. Does that sound fun? Is that something you want to do? So what's the lesson here? Pay your credit card in full if you can. And if you buy something, bitch, you better make sure you can at least pay most of it. And if you don't have the money and it's not something you absolutely need, like it's not food, it's not gas, it's not a utility to keep on, bitch, you don't need it. Okay? Like if it is not an actual absolute necessity, don't fucking buy it. So like VTuber art, if you can't afford it and you want to put it on your credit card, don't fucking buy it. Wait until you have the cash. Okay? Because there are some things like, unless you absolutely need it, or it's an emergency, don't. So, credit is good for score, which a lot of things, yes. Because the system is inherently fucked. And I mean, yeah, I'm getting there. I am getting there. 
Remember the need versus wants question. It's do I need the brand new Salmon Phone 15 or do I just want it because I have last year's Salmon Phone 14? Think real hard about the why. Like chat, you hear me complain all the time about how I can't buy anything. That's because I take what little money I have and it goes to three things. My internet bill so I can continue to make money. My cell phone bill so that way I can, you know, contact people in case of emergency. And then my daughter, or for food or gas or other basic necessities, I need to survive. That's it. That is it. So, let, let, let's show you how fucked up it is with even more examples. What if you bought that cell phone, but $500 wasn't your max? And then you're like, you know what, I have the new Salmon Phone 15. I need to go get some perch, some perchy clothes and bag totaling a thousand dollars so an interest rate of 18 percent and a minimum payment of 50 percent per month what would your true cost be so assuming you don't make any additional purchases 198 dollars extra that's 200 dollars in interest if we go back to that 500 113. So by doubling them out, you almost double the interest. It's crazy. And remember, this is 20%. The other is 18. So a 2% district di 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 difference over that time still doesn't matter much. Like, you're fucked regardless. All right. Now here's where it gets tricky because this is where the people with those commercials on TV come into play. If you have a credit card with a balance of 5000 with an interest rate of 18% and your monthly payment is 100 to pay it off completely, saying that you pay only that $100 a month, you will pay $4,300 in interest on a $5,000 balance. Think about that, chat. Your balance was five grand, and this is assuming you add nothing else to that card to compound the interest and to add to it. Your interest almost totals what you spent. It would take 94 months, that is seven years and 10 months, to pay that off. Seven years. Now, I don't know how many slides are left, but I'm going to go into the part that really fucks you up, and it's not going to be in these slides. I'm actually going to pull up how credit cards, uh, their history affects you. So hopefully, if there, because I know, again, I, there are a large number of people on Twitch, streamers, and other people that are under 25. And I know for a damn fact, none of y'all were taught this, especially if you live in the U.S. Hopefully, when you look at that, you go, oh, shit, I don't want to do that. Because they will follow you forever. And letting that balance carry forward can snowball into a Mount Everest, Titanic, submarine-looking implosion level of disaster. But this is where it can be good. Using your credit card regularly and paying it off absolutely will help build your credit history. So don't be afraid to use them if you know you have the cash. Like if you know you can pay it, you got the balance covered and you just want to use that for again, say you're taking a trip or if you're using it for something consistent like Percy has put in chat, and this is something my dad does. He will put a specific three or four things. It's a sling. Uh, it's two other subscriptions he has. Oh, sling, crunchy roll, and something else. They're all TV. He will put those on those cards and then just auto pay it every month. Stuff like that, do it. Because you're going to keep your balance used your utilization typically under the percentage that makes your credit look good and it also has a credit history like 
it's good it's good it's good and we'll we'll talk about that i'm actually gonna log in hopefully i can no that's not what i need this is with that i need to use not my rise tab i need to use my tab do, 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 do. log in oh good it did save all right <laughs> So you will get to see just how fucked my stuff is today, chat, as an example. But that's because I'm looking for a specific thing. Oh, goody, it went down 24 points. That's awesome. That's what I like to see. All right, so score details is what I want. Okay, sorry about that. I got. I had to get a resource pulled up. All right, if you have credit cards, look at your statement. If you don't have a credit card yet, do your homework because there are a lot of predatory credit cards out there. Check annual fees, interest rate, late fees, blah, 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 blah. Is that the final sign? All right, it is. Cool, that was the last one. All right, so I'm going to hide this for a second. Do, do, do. That's not where I want to type. This is where I want to type. All right. So the thing Percy is talking about, that is what the main part of your credit score is, is this. It is called your credit card utilization rate. And there is a set percentage that typically will fuck you over. So this is part of your income to debt ratio. And you can typically find this by taking whatever the amount of balance is across all of your credit cards and then dividing it by the maximum amount that you have. So for your credit utilization rate, you will say have a credit debt. You have spent 3,350. Your total credit is 53,400. You're doing pretty good. You're doing pretty good. This is the part that matters most when it comes to credit cards. So credit scoring models such as Experian, the website I am at now, FICO, and I don't remember the other ones, Experian, FICO, Equifax. Those are the top three credit card companies. Once you hit 30% for this score, if you go above it at all, that is is when it will tank your credit rating. So, a low utilization rating, which I think it should be 50%, not 30, shows that you're using less of your available credit. To any lenders or borrowers that you are looking at, they will look at this 30% and see that typically, and again, this is not knowing your situation or anything at all, they will assume that you are good at paying things back on time and are good at budgeting. While that may not necessarily be the case, that is how they look at it. So revolving credit is all your lines of credit put together. That's like everything. Uh, this doesn't include loans because, again, that's a different kind. It's, it's weird. So revolving credit, it doesn't have a predetermined end date. It just goes on forever until you cancel it or you lose it. That's like credit cards. That's what credit cards are. So as long as those are in good standing, you haven't reached your limit, and the secret 30% hasn't been hit, you're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. So don't worry too much about credit cards. Just don't be a fucking idiot with them. Don't be like, oh shit, this credit card has a limit of $2,000? Fuck yeah, let's go buy everything I want. Don't do that. Don't do that, chat. You're going to have a bad time, okay? You're going to have a very, very bad fucking time if you do that. All right. So I'm going to take just a little bit of a break, drink some water here. Get my next one pulled up. Where's
where's it at? There it is. <clears throat> now I want this in this layout. All right. So the first part of the stream, I talked about credit cards. The next one is about budgeting. What is a budget? Why do I need one? And again, I have these as handouts. If you would like them, I can easily send them to you on any messaging platform, Discord, whatever. So what is a budget? And why do I need one? Everybody has heard the phrase, the more that you make, the more that you spend. Of course you don't, Percy. Have you heard this saying, what does it mean, and is it true? So for many working people, earning more money allows them to spend more. However, problems arise when people start spending more money than they have <laughs> VTubers. Um, and budgets can help them avoid debt and financial problems. So. People establish budgets to meet obligations and avoid overspending and wasting money. Most people do do short-term budgets. They're not long-term for life. Financial planning for retirement is a pain in the ass, and there's a whole ass thing I could go over with that. Like, there is a whole ass thing. We're not going to get into that. That I, I will actually show something in the Discord server eventually for. I have videos for these too, but I'm pretty sure that would flag videos on YouTube and shit, so I'm not going to do that. Um, a budget is a written plan for your money. I was on the phone with the Fidelity guy. Yeah, no, it's terrible. Now, hold on, Percy. Was the Fidelity guy, was he a financial advisor or was he a fiduciary? If they were a financial advisor, that does not mean they have a degree and also are not backed by other. Oh, oh, he was a financial advisor. That's the worst. That's the worst. All right. So, a fiduciary has legal and ethical duty to act in the best interest of somebody else. That means they have accreditation with, um, like, FICA and a couple other of the banking entities. Advisors, on the other hand kind of can play fast and loose with your money. Uh, it's typically not backed. They don't have the same restrictions on fees. And the saying, all fiduciaries are financial advisors, but not all financial advisors are fiduciaries, come into play. And I, the, nope, that's, that's a different lesson, Rize. Got focus, budgets. It's... So prioritizing expenses and purchases, it makes sure that people have enough money to pay for your essential expenses. So that means you need to rank yours in order of importance. For me, that goes internet, cell phone, and then things for my kid. Luckily, now that I have Medicaid and food stamps, I don't have to worry about food. Even then, that was the same order. I would do... Internet, phone, child, gas, food. That was the order when I did not have assistance for it. Now that I have assistance for it, food's just, I'm fine with food. It's like, I'm good. Um, budgets, they give you control over your money because you know how much you are going to have at all times, how you are spending it, what you are going to be spending it on, and it's an ad. Mm. why I send every 40 minutes. Oh. Oh, my neck. Oh, my fucking God, my neck. Ah. Oh, that was a loud pop. Ah. Thank you, Percy. Oh, you know, I wish I could get my neck pops to show up on the mic, but they don't. 
This is really good. I like this. The water, it's it's caffeinated water. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <clears throat> How much caffeine is in here? It's not a lot. Oh, but can't read the can because it's like neon fucking green. Seventy milligrams. Okay. So like it's got a decent amount. That's like a cup of coffee. But you know, sugar free, just sparkling water. But it tastes like Sprite. I'm very, I'm very pleased with it. I'm very pleased. I think I'm gonna continue to buy this. It's it's very good. I like it. <clears throat> All right. Ad break is done. And Spanish iPhone ad, no idea. Maybe it's because I was talking about the salmon phone fifteen. And Twitch was like, oh, hey, this will be a great time to do uh, an iPhone ad because they're talking about iPhones. But they said salmon, so it must be in Spanish. I don't know. So budgets, if you're a responsible adult, budgets can help avoid impulse buying. Impulse purchases are just exactly what they sound like. They're unplanned, spontaneous purchases triggered by emotions. So these give you instant gratification, much like drugs. Yay, drugs and other things. Other things that give you instant gratification? Sex. Well, if you're born male, typically. Um, born women, sorry. You're, you're kind of out of luck there. Um, and other things. So... Delayed gratification, also known as edging, involves having the self-control to postpone satisfaction. No, they like it. It's just not instant gratification. It's delayed. So, instant gratification is a habit that you can break with effort and intention. Unless you're a hedonist. Chat, does anybody know what a hedonist is? Does anybody know what a hedonist is? Adonis, I know Percy does. So, a hedonist is a person who believes that the pursuit of pleasure is the most important thing in life. So, they will typically do more. Is this financial class and sex ed too? I mean... It clearly, if you're in the United States and in the lower half of it, they sure as shit didn't teach you sex ed. Because, you know, they gotta leave it up to God. God determines how many babies you have. Hedonist? It might be. I'm not too sure. I don't use the word a lot, so it could be. I could look up the pronunciation key. Actually, you know what? That'll only take me a second. It is. Hedonist. It is hedonist. All right, so more advantages to a budget. See, see, abstinence till marriage. That that's that's there's there's a whole I got I have so many videos on these kinds of things. They taught it. The other girls in my class put it to use. There you go, Southern sex ed baby. Adult stream. It is Mooney. It is. So, budgeting. For people like me who like to like go through and do this stuff, a budget is easy. I love budgeting. When I was married, I was the one who handled the budget. Um, it was easy for me. It was second nature. Granted, I also have a degree in mathematics, which everybody can see on Twitter. Um, but I actually like it because that's also a part of the thing with being bipolar. Having borderline personality disorder, it's something I can control easily recognize and look at and know what I can do with it. So budgets, they can't motivate you to pay off debts and save. As we saw with the credit cards, things can get out of hand very quickly. So this, you develop your own rules. You can set certain things aside for how much you do want to spend on impulse purchases, and you can customize a financial plan based on your lifestyle and how much you make. 
So budgeting can help you achieve your financial goals. Now, most of us here in the US, I'm not sure about Europe or Canada or other places in the world, but some of the things that are really hard to achieve financially for my generation currently is homeownership. So saving for that can be a practical nightmare. Yeah, the, we're going to go with that. It's it's shit balls. You're going to get fucked 10 ways to some way if you're trying to save for a house. My sister's going through that right now, and that's why I'm in the basement. They have the money for a house. They just can't get one. So it's like, well, okay. Just going to take it in the ass till I can buy one. Um, budgets also provide a peace of mind because you know what you have. You know what you can spend, and you know what you've spent it on. Granted, I kept dying, so our finances ended up getting fucked, but because they were on me, they came with me when we got a divorce. And now that I've lost literally everything, meh. So, here's the disadvantages to it, and this can be hard. You don't always get what you want. Like, it's it's just not going to happen. Um, whenever I wanted to buy video games, my ex-wife and I, she gave me a rule, and this rule was based upon her experiences with her father, I could not spend real money for him. So what I would typically do is I would get something or take something of mine old, resell it, or find things for really cheap or free, refurbish them, and then sell them for more money to buy things that I wanted. I would also take advantages of glitches and systems and, you know, trade a game that normally would only trade in for like $30, $35 and get $70 for it because GameStop has glitches in their system. <clears throat> It is weird, but it is what it is. And budget takes time. It does. Like you, you've got to, you've got to, for a normal person budgeting, I'm not going to lie. It is hard. It's hard. It's time consuming. And like, especially with a lot of lives, a lot of people work two jobs. A lot of people have other side projects and things they're doing, and they just don't have the time to do it. And I'm going to say this, that also probably not a lot of your teachers or people told you. That's okay. If you don't have the time to do something or you don't have the skill set to do it yourself, it's okay. Nobody has to be perfect at everything. You just got to do your best. You just got to put your best foot forward and do what you can do. Because if you go into this you and you want to headstrong and it's just not your strong suit you will burn yourself out and then you won't want to ever do it again so i will say something that i told my students as a middle school teacher all the time it's okay to struggle with a concept i will never ask for a hundred percent or straight a's all I ask, and all you should ask of yourself, is this one question. Did I give it my best? If you can answer yes, you're fine. That's it. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be 100%. You just have to give your best. Because at the end of the day, the person that you are going to be satisfied with is yourself. Anything you do, whether it be budgeting, financial planning, or any other thing in life with work, do your best. You don't have to be perfect. Do your best. And budgeting very much is a skill. It's not something you could just be like, bam, I got it. It takes time because you have to develop a rhythm. You have to develop a system. And guess what? Systems are like experiments. You're, they'll fuck up. And it takes time. And if you don't have the time, that's okay. As adults, when it comes to this, you can hire somebody to do it. <laughs> so it's okay. But there are some tips and tricks that can help you make a nice basic budget. And again, honestly, again, these are just tips. You don't have to do it this exact way. You just need to find a way to do your own. Hopefully, and this is easier if you have a consistent set of money too. Like if you work the same amount of hours and you know what you're getting, you can, it, you can get at least a basic one. So the first step, know what you're going to be making each month. Now, net income is different than gross income. 
Net income is the income that you take home after all deductions have been taken out of your paycheck. Some of these deductions include things like medical insurance, taxes, state taxes, um, retirement planning. Uh, what else gets taken out? Uh, there's a lot of things to get to. I have a lesson on it. I have a whole paycheck lesson. We'll get there. But there's a lot of things that could potentially be taken. Oh, union dues. If you are, if you work for a field that has a union, like teachers. So there's a lot of different things that can be taken out. But the important thing is to know net is after everything has been taken out. So think about it like fishing. It's what's left in the net after you take out all the garbage. Got it? So. Carefully track your expenses. We went over this with the credit cards and the debit card thing. Just know what you're spending. Just write it down. Write it in a notebook. It's just something basic. You're going to go sleep. All right. Have a good night, Chihiro. So fixed expenses are things that come out on the same day, typically for the set amount. Um, so a lot of the times, this is going to be things like internet. It's a set price. My cell phone bill. Set price. Uh, my internet is 55 a month. My cell phone is 30. It's a set price. I know what days they come out. My internet comes out in three days and my cell phone is on the 22nd. So those are the two days that I know they are going to be coming out. Other things that have a set amount. Rent. Mortgage. Homeowner's insurance. Car insurance. Although that can change. Depend oh, that's a whole other thing. But typically car insurance for each cycle for it, either six months or a year, depending on your state and how your term is laid out, it will be the same. Same with homeowner's insurance. Um, typically those will stay the same. There are others that will have the same date, like electric, gas, you know, utilities, but the amounts can vary. Um, but the fixed ones, especially living, so rent, mortgage, those should be your top priority because you nobody wants to be homeless. <laughs> um, but examples, mortgage, rent, car payments, health insurance, they stay the same. Now, most places, health insurance does come out of your paycheck. However, in some circumstances, your work may not offer health insurance and you will have to pay for it out of your own pocket each month. But that amount will stay the same year to year until terms and prices are updated between the insurer and the state and local governments. Variable expenses, they can change in a month. So this is going to be stuff like food, your gas bill, repair bills, electric bill, water bill, garbage bill, sewer bill. And while these may have, I mean, entertainment doesn't have a set amount, unless it's like a subscription service, but even then, that could be a set amount. Um, you want to add your fixed to your variable. So what I usually do when I am figuring out my variable expenses to go with my fixed, I will take the average of a time period. So for electric in my old house, because we had gas heating, and then electric was the air conditioners, I would take... A running average of the electric bill from April to October, because that's typically when the air conditioners would be in. So that six month stretch, and I would budget that for electricity. And then for gas, I would do October to April, like the start of April. Because again, it gets cold in Ohio, so the gas bill would be higher, the heat would be running more, yada, yada, yada. And I would use that as a placeholder, and I would put a plus or minus 20 on each one, depending, you know, so that way it gave me a little bit of leeway. So, you then want to subtract all of that from your income. The amount left over is your cash surplus. So the surplus you can use either to save, financial goals, or honestly, if you're... My generation, a lot of people just say, fuck it, we're going to die working at our job anyway. Have fun with it. Again, that is up to you. I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. I'm just going to tell you how to make a budget if you want one. So, short-term and long-term for savings. So, short-term is what most people are going to be good at. And honestly, that's really what the budget's for. Like, long-term is beyond five years, and that's... For practicality's sake, long-term budgets are kind of a joke. Because things are going to change year to year. 
So if you are going to set a budget for yourself, do it year to year. Or if year to year is too hard, month to month. Because it's hard to predict and plan. Rent changing, job changing, and life events. Things happen. Budgets are going to change. So really just focus on short-term goals and try to have some if you can. So, and this is what I'm talking about, an emergency cash fund. So, this is also something my ex-wife and I did. We would take, out of our paychecks, $20 each month, because that's all we really could afford to do. Because, <laughs> you know, teachers don't make shit, and she didn't have a real, real job. We would put $20 a month into our safety box our um, that had, like, all our social security numbers. It was our lockbox. And we also called it our fun box. It was our emergency cash fund if we need to get something for the vehicles, if something broke down. Or, like, if we were good and had money both in our bank account and in here, we would use it for fun. Like, we would use it to go out and dates and stuff. So, a fun box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, trying to continue to tr contribute to it monthly, if you can... It doesn't have to be a lot. Like I said, I only put in $20 a month. That's $240 a year. Like, $240 doesn't sound like a lot, but $240 can definitely be a fun fucking weekend out on the town if you know what you're doing. Because that's the equivalent of, like, a Starbucks coffee a week. So it's not bad. And the final step... Just pay attention to where you spend your money. Like, if you notice, oh, hey, I'm spending $300 a month at Starbucks. Probably should cut back on the Starbucks. And you could find spots where you could reduce your discretionary spending and impulse buying. <laughs> Skeb art. <laughs> Skebs and art. <laughs> oh, sorry. I just had some... First world VTuber problems caught in my throat there. Had to cough them out. <laughs> Never always Starbies. Um, so again, discretionary. Is the money spent on non-essential? Or once? Impulse purchases are things like, Oh my god. I need, I absolutely need this crocheted Snorlax plush in my life right now. So discretionary would be like, oh, yeah, I kind of want to upgrade my computer. I'll buy some RAM. That. While Impulse has seen something in the store and you're like, yoink! That's also why I don't do grocery shopping in the stores and do it online. Because that's a lot of problems, too, for impulse buying. Food waste, that's going to be a fun little lesson, too. Oh, my God. That's great. Um, but once you have a budget or you know how much I, I bought my Bestia dehumidifier, uh, that would be discretionary because it wasn't, oh, my God, I absolutely need this dehumidifier. This is, oh, huh, I don't want my friend to die. <laughs> <laughs> I want to keep them alive. <laughs> um, but once you have a, a, a relative budget, again, it doesn't have to be as detailed as what I'm doing. Most people, as long as you know how much you're bringing in each month and how much your bills are going to be, that's a budget. Like, it doesn't have to be fancy. I'm just anal and have a lot of mental problems. So, like, you just... That's how you keep track. Like, I know exactly how much is in both of my bank accounts right now. But what about my Gotcha Yowie game? Well, you know what? That's both impulse and discretionary. And that's... Oh, Gotcha Games. Like, oh my god. Gotcha Games and loot... Actually, Gotcha is... Because, you know, you know what you're getting in Gotcha. Like, you know what the end goal is. You know what's a bane? Fuck you, Blizzard... Fuck you, E-A, for your ridiculous fucking loot boxes. 
Ultimate Team Packs for EA, Loot Boxes, and Call of Duty and Overwatch. Fuck you. That is gambling for children. That is predatory and impulse. Fuck you. I hope that you get fucked by cocaine bear with a with a barbed wire fucking dildo your food budget and discretionary yeah yeah oh by the way did you take my uh, suggestion and get a grilled chicken club sandwich today for dinner or did you get three days of shrimp <laughs> gotta start the gambling addictions early exactly All right, we're not going to complete this. This was an activity for my students. That was yesterday. Yeah. Um, so, but we can talk about it in chat, and I will talk about my own. So, which three budget advantages do you feel are most important? And then two disadvantages of budget. So, for me, honestly, because of the type of person I am, when I'm medicated... <laughs> They help keep me organized, because as weird as this sounds, my medication that helps with my bipolar actually makes me lose focus a little bit. I'm not going to lie to you, since I got back home, I have forgotten to take my meds, because I got home into the basement, was attacked by two wasps, and had to deal with some more beetles, and I've just been too fucking depressed to care. Like, I still haven't unpacked, like, my bag, and I still need to do laundry. Because of that, though... I was able to hyper-focus, again, with the bipolar, having control over something, to focus on finding and creating these. So when I'm on my medication, it actually dulls my focus a little bit and subdues me. And you can tell on my streams when I'm medicated and when I'm not. But it dulls me, so having a budget ahead of time helps me stay there. It keeps me grounded. Another advantage for me is I know exactly what's going to be coming out set bill wise, and then I can plan for emergencies or other things. Now, not having a set income as a Twitch streamer makes that very, very difficult, especially when I go through those depressed periods and I don't make anything. Um, but knowing that, I can still try and work out a budget to survive. So disadvantages of it, if you're somebody like my ex-wife who didn't do the budget, but you wanted to know every detail about it, about what was spent where, you can be a raging bitch about it. And you could obsess over it too much that you just stress yourself out and, you know, don't cook, don't clean, impulse buy food, impulse buy art, impulse buy a lot of things. And you could spend more than you have. Like... I didn't know my ex-wife's credit card balance. She never showed me. I didn't know what she spent. I didn't know what she used it on. She wouldn't tell me. It was probably a red flag in retrospect. Mine, though, I told her exactly because I didn't care. I don't have anything to hide. But a disadvantage of it definitely can be like you can limit yourself and you can worry about it too much. Um, so there is that. All right. Can I drag these? No, nope, I can't. All right. So we're going to talk about what is a fixed expense and a variable. Now, remember, fixed means unchanging. Variable can change. Got it? So entertainment. Is this a fixed expense or variable? I'll give you guys like 10 seconds in chat to answer. Now, some can fit in both. Variable, variable, variable. Okay. For the most... F you plead the fifth. Wow. Ah, see, Mooney's got it. Mooney actually just covered the point I was going to say. Entertainment can be both. If it's something like Netflix, Hulu, Spotify, YouTube, like it's a set subscription price. However, movie theaters, plays, 
other things that are entertainment, those would be variable. More often than not, I would say for today's society, entertainment would fit more in variable still. Mortgage. This one should be easy. Uh, mortgage, chat, fixed, or variable. Like, all of y'all should know this. It, this, this is fixed. That ain't going to change. Unless you really done mess up with a refinance or something. Unless you done mess up AA Ron, this is going to be a fixed expense. Your car payment is also a fixed expense. Because again, unless you refinance or you done fucking mess up, <clears throat> ex-father-in-law, your car payment should be pretty static. Static means unchanging. Or a divorce where your ex has to pay the mortgage. Exactly. Eating out with friends. Unless you get the same... Uh, that's maintenance, not a payment. Yep, see? Ha. Ha. Semantics, Percy. Semantics. I've got you covered. Eating out with friends. Unless you're eating the same meal and going to the same restaurant on the same date, this is a variable expense. A haircut is a variable expense. Because again, unless you're getting the same thing on the same date and their prices are unchanging, it is a variable. Can it be a fixed expense? Yes. But most of the time, it's going to be a variable. <laughs> All right. This next one, I'm genuinely curious what everybody is going to put in chat. Student loans. Because boy, do I have a hot take for this one. So student loans is going to be more an American problem than everybody else. I would argue they are variable. They can be fixed. But I would argue they are variable. For one reason. And it's four words. Income Driven Repayment Plan. And they can also change based on your income, the interest rate the government may send them on. So, there are types of loans, which we will get into in the loan lesson in two Fridays from now. Let's just say loans are the worst. Groceries. Now, for me, they are going to be a fixed expense. Now, you're probably wondering, Rize, how the fuck are groceries a fixed expense for you? That's because I'm on food stamps. I get a fixed amount of money each month for food. So, mine is a fixed expense. Typically, though, groceries are going to be variable. Because not everybody's going to use the same amount every month. I do. So, it's... Because, like I said, I don't impulse grocery shop. I I order online. I know exactly what I'm looking for. And then I go pick it up. Yeah. So, they're going to be variable because they don't stay the same every month. <clears throat> yeah, I don't impulse buy groceries. That's the one thing I won't. I refuse to. Like, there are people like, oh, I want to look, uh, you know, I want to go to the store and look at things. Not me. It's like, nope, I know I want to make this on this day with that. Uh, see, you can still impulse buy candy, you know, because the nine fucking pounds that's on my shelf over there. Although, although. Yeah, I know, I know. Segway, segway, segway. So. If anybody has the Target app right now, and I do mean right now, and you want yourself some Halloween candy, Target Circle has a deal going on right now. If you spend $40 on groceries and the candy is included, 
you will get $10 off of your order. This stacks with a current online coupon of theirs. 20% off all the Halloween candy. So, it will first do the $10 off, then it will do the 20% off. So I got nine pounds of Halloween candy for just a skosh over 20 bucks. For me and the occasional treat for my daughter for whenever she does something really good, because I am poor and cannot give her an allowance. So if she like cleans her room without being told or because she still, you know, has a couple accidents with the potty, I give her a potty treat or, you know, other things. It's fine. I give her to that. Will I eat all this candy in the month? If I do, I'll be dead because I'm diabetic, but no, no, I will not eat it all in the month. Unless I continue to not take my medicine. That's a very good, that, that, that's a high possibility. That's a high possibility because the longer I go without taking my medicine, the, the uh, more uh, destructive my behaviors toward myself become. Anyway, new shoes. Shoes don't have the same price, so those are going to be variable. Real estate taxes. Oh, God, real estate taxes. Do you guys think these are fixed or variable? Most of you in chat probably don't know what a real estate tax is. I know Percy knows. T probably knows, too. <laughs> so so percy how about you enlighten us with your experience with it oh mooney oh mooney 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 if only it was fixed because you know what can change Property values. So if an appraisal says your home that you bought for 80000 is now worth 130000 guess what? You pay more in real estate taxes. Hooray! Which means your mortgage goes up and it's just so much fun. So even though you think it's a fixed expense, it's variable. Don't move to the United States ever, Mooney. Visit, yes, never move here. It is a hellscape. By the way, if anybody not in the United States wants a red panda is the best housewife in the world, I am currently taking applications to escape this hellscape that is Ohio. Plus, if you want kids, I have one, so you don't have to worry about popping one out. Send me a DM. I got you. Anyway. Yeah, see? Health insurance. <laughs> uh, health insurance. Um, the internet bill, I've already talked about this. This is fixed. Like, unless you have data caps and they charge you, but most places don't anymore, um, that's going to be fixed. Rent, because it's based on a contract, they cannot change it during the term of the contract. Afterwards, they can, but it's going to be fixed. It's going to be fixed. Why the fuck does it say both for cell phone bill? That's fixed. Oh, add. Oh, you know what? No, nope. I, I think I figured out why. Okay, I think I know why. I think I know why they have it in variable. <laughs> because you can change your plan monthly. You can change your plan monthly. That would do it. That would do it. Yeah, I'm never going to buy a phone anymore like that. Especially since you found me that website, Percy. Back market is great. 
T is going to be buying a phone from there too. Like my Z flip three. Oh my God. Like that was fair condition. It had a couple scratches by the camera on the outside. Like it's so damn good. It's, uh, I, I, I can't see myself ever buying a brand new phone again, ever. Yeah, you do. And we've talked about, we have talked about a new phone for you for months, T. Months. <laughs> oh, I do have more water. Cool. I thought I had to get some more. I know. I know. God, I love water. If I had the money, I would buy some more filters. Was it? I thought you had the 2015 one, because what were... Were you using a 10? I thought you were using an 8. <clears throat> oh. Was it? I thought that was a 2015 phone. Alright, that's my bad. Sorry. Six-year-old phone. Yeah, but then again, Angel was using a iPhone 6. Oh, <laughs> wait wait you guys can pick what to pay for your electric you know Mooney if you want to live in made red panda I may not be good at much but I can cook and clean <laughs> okay so I figured out during the ads why cell phone it has both so for both, I forgot with cell phones because I just have Mint Mobile and it's just, I get unlimited everything for 30 bucks a month. So why the fuck would I change that? You can, with like Verizon, Sprint, T-Mobile, US Cellular. Oh, the budget plan. Eh, I mean, kind of. For gas, the budget plan is like that, but the electric one is shit. It's, it's so random with the electric one. But the cell phone, I understand. It's um, um, because you can change the plans and add-ons at any given time. So that makes sense. Electric bill, yes, with the budget plan and the normal, I can see it now. Dentist bill is going to be variable because, well, teeth suck. If I could, I would have all my teeth pulled and have implants put in, or dentures. Even though I know that's a pain. My friend Gremlin has dentures. But I still feel dentures would be a little easier to manage and take care of than teeth. Because if a denture breaks, hey, you're not going to feel the pain from it. Gas for the car is also going to be very... Dentures aren't the worst. Yeah, once your mouth heals, it's super easy. Because you just have to keep your mouth free and clean from bacteria. And then just keeping your dentures clean. That's so easy because you can just do that while you're sleeping. Give them a quick brush. Put them in a solution. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Teeth are clean. Gas for the car is going to be variable. And same thing with car repairs. My first year's paying electric. You were so scared they gave you money back. That's nice. Oh, yo, fun fact, chat. So last night on my Minecraft screen, stream, I was talking about... Um, the balance on my Ohio Department of Education account for my licensures, because I ended up not renewing it last year after I got fired for being, you know, me. Um, so they're going to be mailing a paper check out. They got back to me real quick. It's like, oh, this government agency can get back to me next day. But disability, full fucking year. No, that's cool. It's cool. No, it's fine. So that'll be nice because that 135 will be getting back. I'll actually pay my cell phone internet for the next two months because I got my Twitch tomorrow too. Or Monday. One of the two days. So woo. Woo. $210. Yeah. Ballin. And potentially if I budget it right. 
I could get the one game I'm looking forward to this year next month. And that is Star Ocean Second Story R. See? Budgeting. It all comes full circle. Anyway. <laughs> We're going to skip that. Ah, here we go. All right. So. This is a student budget example. Oh, yeah, I remember that. You told me about that, Percy. So, the student, the budget for our high school senior, Liana, is shown below. Liana works part-time at a retail clothing store to earn money. Liana is currently living at home with her family. She has an older car that has frequent repair bills. And she has to pay for her car's gate. Was I high when I wrote some of this stuff? $25 a month for insurance. Oh, wait. She's probably on her parents' plan. And she only has to pay what her car's premium is. Sorry, I haven't, like I said, it's been a year since I've used this, so it's like, was I high? That is cheap insurance, but like I said, she's in high school, so she probably is only paying for her car's premium, and if she's driving a really older car, it could be that. So, her financial goals, she would like to get an apartment with a friend after graduation. She shops with the general, not say Fado, the general. Uh, my car insurance, when I had a car, was 117 and that was for full coverage on my CRV. She would like to purchase a used car in six months. Oh yeah, her car's got to be absolute shit if she's paying like 275 bucks a month in repairs. And she would like to make a trip with her friend. So, using her October budget, what advice and suggestions for saving money would you give her? So here, we have, you know, she's making about $705 from babysitting and working. Not bad. Not bad. Like, I'm old. So when I was 18, minimum wage in Ohio was... Duck, you'll have to help me with this. It was... Was it 550? 535? When we were 18? It was in the fives. I know that. Because it wasn't until 2010 when it went up to six. And then like 2014 when it went up to eight. What was, do you remember what minimum wage was when we were in high school? It was in the $5. I don't remember where. Because I worked at Dollar General senior year, and I only made like five something an hour. I think it was five fifty. Yeah, it was like five forty five. It was low. It was low. Um, So like 700, I'd have to work full time at that to make that much a month. So, whew. Uh, how times have changed. So, looking at her expenses, we have... Two of these we absolutely cannot get rid of. Car repairs, because you need the car to kind of move. And y'all, well, I guess three. The gas and the car insurance. So really, entertainment eating out, she's spending $145 a month. Now remember, she's a high school student. So if she's spending $145 a month for eating out, that's a lot. That is a lot, because it's typically going to be weekends, probably. So she's spending like 30 bucks a weekend, 30 to 40 bucks a weekend doing, I don't know what the fuck she would even do. I'm from the country. So this is where some of this escapes me, but she could probably cut that in hell in half. So she has 225 in her savings and she's hit. So right now she would have about $190 extra. Even if she only took like 20 bucks out of the entertainment to get a 200, like she could easily double that 200 by the end of the month. So it wouldn't be too bad. We're not going to complete a table because you're not a student. Ah, now this. This I can give to people. I have blanks of these and I have blanks of bank registers because, again, I taught. And I'll show you some of my resources after this. But you can practice making a budget. And here is what a simple budget sheet would look like. Again, uh, I can send this to anybody who so desires. Uh, here's another example. All right, let's look at Terrence's. We're not going to complete the chart. So, Terrence, 24 years old, and is attending college part-time while working full-time. He works in an office as a salesman. His average net monthly income is $3,055. Hey, Ofu. And he saved a small amount of money, but he has no other investments because, again, he's 24 in today's economy. He lives in an apartment with two roommates, and he drives to work daily and enjoys going out with friends. 
He wants to repay his college loans after graduation <laughs> and save money for his own apartment. He wants to know his monthly cash surplus and what would it be if he begins putting 200 in his savings every month. We're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. And we're not going to do the assessment. All right. So now we're going to go into the part that I'm going to hide real quick. Boop. And pull back up so that way you don't actually see my my info and name. <clears throat> so this is what I was talking about with the credit earlier and what affects your credit. So if you look at my payment history, 99%. It's high impact. It shows I pay my bills on time. My credit card use, I don't have any. <laughs> so that's why there's no percentage here. Uh, but typically mine was around 40 to 50%. It wasn't as low as I would like it to be. Um, yeah. The derogatory marks are the credit cards that got closed because I haven't had income for a year. I have decent credit age. Most of these total accounts, if I click on it, it's making me log in again, almost show my fucking name. Are my college loans. Now, except for this one, you see this one? It's it's my Chime bank account. I know what you're thinking, Rize. That's a bank account. Why is it showing up in your credit history? Chime has a card that is a credit builder card where you take money from your bank account and you put it on it and it treats it like a secured credit card with a set limit. It's very nice. But all the rest you see department those are all my loans. Those are all my loans. And then I have one with Navient left. That's almost paid off. But yeah. So there is that. Alright. So. This is going to be a shorter stream. Because again, this is a teaching stream. And you guys just sat through two hours of. What is credit? What is the budget? Next week. For the teaching stream. It is going to be over. The, the credit point thing? Probably not. It's very much an American thing. Next week is going to be another mainly American thing. Taxes. How to fill out your W-4s, what's a W-2, and how to fill out the 1040A, and how to fill out your income taxes. So that way people know what things are. But thank you for everybody who showed up. I realize that an educational stream is not the most fun and interesting thing to go through. However, the useful that I will be going through is, well, it's fucking useful. Like, you're gonna learn. You're gonna learn. And this is very much a topic that a lot of people are like, well, nobody taught me how to do that. Well, guess what? I'm going to. So if you have friends that have struggle struggles with these, and even if they're not into VTubers, like... Next week is going to be a huge one. Same time, 5 p.m. Eastern. I'm going to be going over taxes because that is the thing that if you look at VTuber Twitter, all of them get their panties up in a bunch when it comes to tax time because they don't know what the fuck to do. So we're going to be talking about that. And uh, let's see, who's online to raid? Yeah, and it's just interesting to learn, if you're not American, how things work. Let's see, I've raided... Eh, I don't want to raid Tagami. I've raided Akai. Redbow. Oh, okay. Thank you, Percy. Ran... Eh, you know what? I'm going to raid Tora. I usually... I usually stream before Tora. So I'm just going to raid Tora, even though her current model creeps me the fuck out. I was taught economics. Oh, that's good. So you actually had a decent school, Ofu. So we're going to raid Spacey Tora. So if you have emotes, 
and if you don't have emotes. Uh, I will be streaming tomorrow. I will be doing a Dead by Daylight collab with Simply Azura at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Sunday is up in the air. I probably will not stream because I do not have Ari this weekend because I've had her five of the last six days. And even though I'm a girl, I enjoy football. So I'm going to watch football on Sunday. I'm going to watch the local team, the Browns, get absolutely shit on because that is a Cleveland tradition. And then I'm going to put on my Jaguars jacket, snuggle in my bed, and watch the Jacksonville Jaguars. Yo. Go Saints. I'm okay with that too. But go Jaggies. Fuck the Browns. And fuck you, Philly. But anyway, I hope everybody has a relaxing rest of their Friday evening. Again, thank you all very, very much for coming out for this lecture today. And I hope to see you and many more next Friday. Bye.